Singapore is such a small country, and yet it's commanded a great deal of attention, particularly these days when developing countries are looking for ideas for growing and developing rapidly, but not only rapidly, also sustainably. It's also attracted a lot of attention from more advanced countries looking for new ideas, policy innovations, governance innovations. One major component of the Singapore brand is the successful governance and policy making that people notice about Singapore. Singapore's brand is important for its commercial success, but it also adds a lot of weight to its international clout. Singapore enjoys soft power, and as a small country, without military might and without economic might, the ability to attract people and to be appealing to other powers in the world is key to Singapore's survival and prosperity. When we look around the world, we see the rise of right-wing populism everywhere. We see ethnic tensions and hostility. Singapore still offers that model of a multi-racial, a multi-religious society that is led by what most of us would regard as a clean, an elite, and a pragmatic government. The challenges that the book talks about comes really with Singapore's embrace of globalisation. And with that comes also all sorts of pressures and tensions that can pull apart the nation-building project. The book begins by talking about how the Singapore state actually acquires legitimacy, achieves a certain kind of durability and success in policy making and governance, drawing from three things really, democratic elections being one, secondly, the ability to deliver the goods so that people are materially satisfied with life in Singapore, and thirdly, by also being able to convey a certain kind of moral authority. Singapore has been obviously a success story, but the same success story can come to constrain our imagination about how to become better for the future. For example, by being very, very focused on economic growth, we tend not to pay as much attention as we should on such things as equality or narrowing that inequality gap. And that will surely have a detrimental effect on social cohesion, the nation-building project, and just the legitimacy of the whole system and its durability as well. So I think this book looks critically at what has been ignored in the Singapore success story. I think the main contribution of this book is that it is able to provide a big picture account of how Singapore got to be the way that it is today and where it's likely to go in the future. The book also would be of interest to any scholars or students who are interested in the questions of liberalisation, neoliberalisation, authoritarianism, uh, students who are keen to think about politics, governance, public administration through the lens of a very complex Southeast Asian country. I think this is an ideal book for survey courses in Asian studies, in part because it is short, it is written in a clear and jargon-free manner. I myself use this book uh, as the basic text for a course that I teach at the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy called Governing Nation State and Global City Singapore. And the students seem to take to this book very positively. <laughs>